People ask me all the time, where's your favorite place to fish? And I always say the same thing, Algoma Country, Sault Ste. Marie. This week we travel with two different guides for two different species. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, the new Fly Fisher crew is in Algoma Country in Sault Ste. Marie. The city is located on the St. Mary's River in Ontario, across the river from its twin city of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. The two cities are connected by an international bridge, which crosses over the rapids at the locks. Accommodations from campsites to five-star hotels are available, along with restaurants, shopping, a casino, and a picturesque boardwalk that follows the harbor front. Within a very short drive of the Sioux are numerous lakes and rivers with many different species. Our target species this week are smallmouth bass and Chinook salmon. Our guides are Adam Valley, owner of Angling Algoma, and Tyler Dunn of Tyler Dunn Guiding. The reports of the previous week on the lake had been good and the fishing was excellent, but this week is different. It's late season and the weather is changing, bringing in cold front after cold front. The temperature drops suddenly from 23 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit to 3 degrees Celsius or 38 degrees Fahrenheit. I know the fishing will be tough. Now Adam, we've run into some pretty nasty weather and most people that fish bass know that bass do not like sudden change. Can you explain it? So we're dealing with post front conditions right now and the fishing has gotten a little bit tougher because of the big drop in temperature. As we get more stable conditions, whether it's overcast for a few days, the fish will start to feed more heavily again. But right now we're just right in that two day post front time where the fishing is gonna be a little bit tough. So Adam, that if that's the case that we got bad weather and, and the fish have shut down a bit, what do we do to try to put a fish or two in the boat? We're gonna do exactly what you've been doing, Bill. Painfully slow, down and dirty, on the bottom, getting that bait right in front of those fish. They're not gonna be chasing anything, so they're gonna want something really slow moving, and they're gonna want something that they don't have to aggressively go after, but they can pick up and still get a meal. Okay, Bill, what we got here is we have a nice feeding flat for these fish to to come up and feed on, and we're close to a nice drop dropping off into deeper it, it water. It drops off quite a bit. I can see like a, like a table rock here. Exactly, and what, what we have is stable water out deep, and when they get the need to go up or the crayfish start moving, they get up on the flat and they eat. But you want to fish over top of it. Fish over top and into the deep water, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so. Because of the temperatures and all the fronts that have rolled through, we're going to do it really painfully, painfully slow. Okay, just little twitches. Little twitches, yeah. Yeah, now, painfully slow. I got a crayfish pattern, and that's what uh, Adam told me that they're, they're queuing in on this year. Here, you got to finesse painfully slow, and I'm going to show you in a second. It's a decent fish, though. Yeah. How'd he hit it good? Oh, wham. Yes, it's fighting good. This this is a five way rod, and just look what it bends over. <laughs> Come on, you. Now you're telling me there's a ridge of, of rocks there, like a yeah, a, a, a sunken uh, shelf. Basically, it's a little flat rock flat that drops off in the deep water. Yeah. Right, and they're right on the edge. Right on that drop, usually. Yep. It's a decent fish. Stocky one. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Good job. You grab them there? Yeah, you grab them. I'll let you handle them. Now that is, yeah, really, really nice fish. Uh, it's chunky, not, not huge, but it, see how much of a battle it gave me for cold water? And like I said, painfully slow retrieve. I mean, we're used to the summer for bass attacking. This was just little three, four inch jerks and it hit. It like a ton of bricks though. Very nice. Let's let it go. Now, the, the fish that we just released, talked about what it was eating there, Adam. 
Who's eating a crayfish very similar in size to your clouser bill and color. And it's a great sign for us because we know that the crayfish are going to be moving in the rocks right. now. So they're coming up to feed. So. I was dragging that right on the bottom. So I'm just like a crayfish. Exactly, yep. And the fish pounded on it. And it, it was feeding definitely because that was in its gullet there. Yeah. Yeah. How do cold fronts affect fish? Air pressure affects fish because their buoyancy in the water is controlled by an air sac. This is very sensitive and they feel the slightest change in pressure. It's generally believed that a falling pressure tends to make fish more active and a rising pressure shuts them down. Therefore, when a front is approaching us, the pressure is dropping until it arrives and then begins to rise. Thus, fish tend to bite best before an approaching front and generally not as well after it passes. Adam was admiring my rod and reel and asked if he could try it out. And lo and behold, he hooks into a nice small mouth. Oh, there's the fish. No, that's, that's outstanding there, Adam. You want to sit? You can sit down all you want, Bill. I, I took a little break, and Adam says, I'd like to try that. And uh, very nice fish off this rock pile here. Same, same, same oh. pattern. You got that shallow water going to deep water. Oh, that's a chunk. That's a chunk. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a nice fish on the fly rod for me, Bill. <laughs> that's a nice fish in anybody's. Look at that. Thank you. Look at that. <laughs> Take that. Did you ever eat that? Yeah, you go ahead. It, it, you just got to be persistent at this time of year. You're not going to get record numbers at all, but you're going to get excellent top quality fish like that. Uh, slow down, slow down, slow down. That's what I've learned on this, on this episode. This time of year, cold water, slow down. The best thing about coming to the Sault Ste. Marie area is, if one lake isn't panning out, another lake is not too far. Adam suggested we move over to another lake that he knows. When you have a cold front situation, you must remember that smallmouth bass will hold tight to structure. Structures such as submerged trees and rock piles are definite hotspots. But this lake, the structure they were on was an underwater hump that went from 25 feet up to 8 feet. A good sonar is a must to stay on fish. Now, we're post storm. It's about day two after a storm and you've got to slow down. And when I mean slow, it's like I'm dragging the bottom. I have a weighted, fully full sinking line, type six that goes down quickly. I've got a weighted fly. I'm right on the bottom and I'm just bouncing it on the bottom, painfully slow. But that's what you have to do in these conditions. These cold weather, cold front conditions can make you crazy. But if you do slow down, you will be successful. The equipment I used this week was a nine foot number five weight rod, but it's a stiffer five weight. It's got a stiffer tip on it. I used a full sinking type six line that sinks at about six inches per second and I counted it down. We knew how much water we were in, so I counted it down to make sure I got right to the bottom. Good reel, large arbor, good drag system, a must. These fish can be quite chunky. So that's it in a nutshell. Sinking lines, no fancy uh, top water this, this time. We had bad conditions, so I had to get right down to the bottom. Nope, missed him. Good hook set though. Give it to him. Why not? Yeah. Give it a slow raise. There you go. Fish on. Fish on. <laughs> oh no, you don't. There's something wrong with this fly. I've got a problem. That's my third fish I've hooked up. The distance here between the gap of the hook and the head isn't enough. 
That fish hooked up hard and hit it hard and I still wasn't able to hook. That's the third time that I've done that this morning. I'm gonna have to change flies and get something that's got a wider gap in the hook. Conditions being what they were with the low ceiling, heavy rain and low pressure coming in, the fish went deep. So what I had to do was go to crayfish patterns, this being a, a clouser minnow in the crayfish colors, got a little bit of sparkle on it, weighted and I went right down to the bottom with a type six full sink line. The other pattern that worked really well was this, this uh, crawdad pattern that was uh, given to me by a friend of mine. It sits with a hook up and it's got uh, rubber legs and, and lots of uh, sparkle, but you work it the same as, as a crayfish, skirting it along the bottom. That's the only thing that works. So basically that's what we use this week. Now Adam, tell me a little bit about your guide service, what it's called first, and what species of fish you go after. Bill, my company is called Angling Algoma. Uh, you can find me at anglingalgoma.com or that handle on Instagram and Facebook. We target muskies, northern pike, largemouth and smallmouth bass and walleyes for the majority. If somebody wants to get your guide service, how soon ahead should they book? Well, never be afraid to call. Uh, you never know when there is an opening, but it's always nice to have uh, a couple months in advance to have a schedule. Gotta get down. That's the one Two problem ones. with fly fishing. You can't get down as fast oh, as you can with a spin up. rod. What is that? How, how deep is that? It's funny how they moved out to deep water, eh? Fish, 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 fish. Oh, nice yeah. Nice job, Bill. Bouncing it up and down a couple of times, and the line just goes tight. Oh, nice oh, fish. Oh, it's a big fish. Yeah, nice fish. This is a really, really nice fish. Clouser minnow. It uh, was in, it was designed for smallmouth bass. The color that Adam has picked for me, same color as crayfish. Great fight, yeah. great fight. Now this is a really, really nice fish. Yes, man. <laughs> Good job, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah. Nicely done. There we go. Yeah, oh, that's right that's out. that's a good fish. And I never just he's strong. He'll feel how strong he is in his mouth. There you go. Nice, nice bass. Uh, let's release this guy. Thanks a lot for a great day. Uh, it was tough conditions, but you knew exactly what to do. Yeah, it was slow, but we managed to get some good fish. Uh, I highly recommend you call Adam for your next trip when you come up to the Sioux. The man knows his stuff, I'm telling you. I highly recommend him. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks, Bill. Great day. Up next, King Salmon action in the St. Mary's Rapids. The next day I meet up with guide Tyler Dunn, a fun, easygoing type of person with a ton of experience in guiding. Originally, we were going after largemouth bass nearby, but due to bad weather, we decided to go after Chinook salmon in the St. Mary's Rapids. There's a well-groomed pathway to the rapids that takes about 10 minutes to travel. You can only access the rapids from the Canadian side. The rapids are a minor two-thirds of a mile of its length by a quarter mile wide. The riverbed is bedrock, boulders, rubble, gravel, and sand. Perfect spawning grounds for fish. I don't want to interfere with his fishing. No, no, we're fishing right here. Bag. That's a Chinook, isn't yep, it? Yep, that's a yeah. king. Good start. <laughs> Maybe keep your rod to the side. We'll try and turn them a bit. Yeah. Oh, let go. Popped him. Popped him. 
that's the way it goes, but that's a good sign. I've only been here a few minutes. One fact you must accept when fly fishing for Chinook salmon is you will hook up plenty of times, but you only land approximately two out of every 10 fish. With fish averaging in the 20 to 25 pound area, it's easy to see why this is so. The biggest problem my clients have, especially in the rapids on windy days, is mending your line. Now what I'm doing is I'm making sure my line's following my indicator. Flick it, hand to hand, finger on line, follow. Fl indicator down, set the hook. Another fish. Biggest factor in hooking this fish was the dead drift. My indicator was making no motion at all. I was mending my line. Yeah, usually turn it works and you put your rod tip on the water. You got it over in the pool, that's good. Yeah, I, we might have a chance at this guy. That's a big fish. Ooh, a big boy, one. that's a big fish. It is a big one. You know what? I'm gonna have to hook this nut. That's upwards of 25, 30 pounds. Oof. Come on. Get it. There we go. Get him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Down inside. It is. I'll hold him up. Well, there you go, Tyler. Congratulations. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> You're going to give us a lesson on mending line, and he ends up catching big fish. <laughs> yes, excellent fish. We'll let her go. Now, Tyler, uh, we're up in Sault Ste. Marie in Algoma country. It's a pretty big place, but there's a real variety of fish up here, isn't there? It's a uh, multi-species mecca, in my opinion. Uh, you know, spring and fall, you got the steelhead run, Pacific salmon all through uh, the fall months. We have summer Atlantics. We have the brook trout we uh, target throughout the summer months. 365 up here, there's always something going on, whether it's bass, walleye, uh, pike. We're always, always on a bite. Now, Tyler, your, your guide service is called Tyler Dunn Guide Service. Yep. How soon ahead would somebody have to call you in order to make sure they got the, the dates they want? Uh, that relates to time of year. Uh, if you're looking for early season, May, June, July, you want to get booking Christmas time, early winter. Uh, I book up, uh, you know, six months ahead of time. If you're looking for fall fishing, you don't have to book till May, June, but uh, contact me five, six months ahead of time. Fish. Yep. Nice. I think it's fish. Yeah, yeah. Stay up here, buddy. Get it on the reel as fast as I can. Nice drift. That was bang on drift. Another king. Well, that feels like it. Yeah. Good fight. Not not a jumper though, this one. No, staying down so Staying far. down. Strong, strong, powerful fish. One thing that'll happen with Chinook salmon is they run directly at you. So you gotta be quick. Okay, I'm gonna start backing yep. up. Looks like a big pink, it I think. It might be a big pink. I seen a white belly. Yeah. It might be a big pink salmon. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that looked like to me a pink salmon. Well, no, I just I just lost the battle on that one. Uh, just pulled the hook out. Oh well. <laughs> but the hookups, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball here, yeah. The setup we used on this trip was a typical nymphing setup using two flies. I used a floating line to a leader the same length as my rod, which was 11 feet. It was tapered down to an eight pound fluorocarbon tippet, then the first fly. At the bend of the first fly, I tied a length of 14 inches of eight pound fluorocarbon, and then the second fly. 14 inches above the first fly, I attached the minimum amount of split shot to take the fly to the bottom. The indicator placement was constantly being adjusted to one and a half to two times the depth of the water.
the flies for the rapids are simple. I used only three patterns. First, a single egg yarn fly in cheese color, white, chartreuse, and fluorescent orange. The second pattern was a size 8 black stone fly. The third pattern was an olive woolly bugger. Make sure you have them in black and in white. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Tyler. Tyler, that's just the way my day's going, isn't it? I'm having lots of fun, lots of hookups. It's just not my day, it, but that happens. Fish. Fish. That's a fish. Nice. I think it's pink. Pink? I think Pinky. so. Compared to the sizes of the other ones, it's not very big. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. it's a humpy. Awesome. Now look at this folks, it's, uh, I've, been, I've been hitting big king salmon all day and pulled out a small pink. There are all sorts of them here, uh, especially in September. Well, we'll let this guy go and I'm having a great day. I don't, <laughs> don't have much success. I'm hooking lots, but not much success, but hey, that's one fish. <laughs> Water's warm, warmer than the air. Yeah. Well, Tyler, I want to thank you very much for taking me out. I highly recommend you, you call Tyler for your next outing here in Sault Ste. Marie. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> for more information on this episode and others in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.